Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Show, produced by the Total Connector. My name is Kevin Davani. Uh, my very special guest again for a second time is Randy Brito from Lotto Mesh. Uh, Randy, thanks so much for your time coming on my show. Thank you for it's having me here. All right, let's go deep into the rabbit hole. Uh, now, before previously we talked about uh, you know the interview I did with uh, Richard Myers from Global Mesh Labs uh, in conjunction you know with GoTenna. So. Uh, can you, yeah, reiterate or a little bit um, from your perspective, uh, like summarize the the talking points that you thought you know are essential to maybe from your you know perspective to comment on or to add to the to the knowledge that Richard shared. Yeah, I asked, it was a really good interview. He covered a lot of in, in uh, topic into the networks, like not only for Bitcoin payments, which will be like fairly easy to do because of the very small use of bandwidth of the Bitcoin transactions and Bitcoin block, heads, block headers. So um, it, it was interesting that he was referring to also a way of communication, which is what Lachamesh is more focused on, which is we are focusing on bringing a more feasible, decentralized, radio mesh network so we want it not only to be used for payments or things that are very um, in low bandwidth or, or very small in in byte size we actually want it to be a way of a, a way to use bitcoin and also serve websites so it's not only meant for chats or it's very small messages but it's, it's being thought as a way to also transmit like Bitcoin blockchain data, not only the headers, but be also be able to sync your full node from the Genesis blog or at least uh, keep it up to date from your neighbors. So if, if inside the mesh, you will be able to keep up to date your Bitcoin blockchain, uh, your Bitcoin full node by downloading the latest blocks from the nodes, the Lodge Mesh node that are close to you. So we wanted to be capable of doing that. For that, we are, we've been working in the second prototype for it to be able to do uh, theoretically at least 500 kilobits per second. So that's like 10 times the uh, speed of a LoRa, a regular LoRa connection over radio, but it's also um, around 10 times more than the consumer product that and the other product or other mesh products exist on, on the market so and this is also why we're trying to make it a protocol uh, capable of using tools that are already uh, exist, but adapting it for our own use and creating our own protocol so it's also capable of running on ipv6 um, services so you will be able to run services on it like a server or lightning network server or electron server or make a VPN so you are capable of circumvent some kind of blockage that's in a, in a way that it's resilient enough and, and in a way that it's censorship resistant enough and anonymous enough so you can even run that kind of VPN over mesh over the Lacha mesh in places like China where people are being detained and put in jail for running a VPN. All right. Um, it's funny, uh, we're talking about communication in general. So I'm going to turn off our both of our videos for the sake of better, you know, bandwidth um, a connection. Um, and I'm going to turn off yours too. So we will have, you know, a, more, a smoother. I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a, Great summary you gave. Um, so let me ask you, um, um, you have on your, um, you guys have you on your page, um, Locho Mesh, uh, Locho Mesh, you have already like pre-orders of Turpial, you call them Locho Mesh Turpial devices. Um, what what is this again? What is this Turpial device able to do? What is it capable of? Like, if someone ordered that this thing uh, theoretically from Iran, would what would that do? 
Yeah, uh, Lacha.io, we have a pre-order, which currently runs more like a donation to the open source uh, software that we are developing, which is the protocol, the mobile app, that is the first concept of app that is going to run on the mesh, but also the firmware that runs on the hardware. So uh, this, is, this runs more like a donation right now because we, it is a pre-order of the um, second prototype we are building. So when this second prototype is completely uh, tested and it's capable of doing the, the, the being so as a minimum uh, viable product, so we, we wanted to send it to these people who have donated. So it's, that's why we saw it as a pre-order. So you, you'll be there like the first person to receive the first manufactured Chirpio device we are so, of the large mesh. So what this device is going to do is that it's going to enable you to create a mesh with um, other devices that are close enough. So uh, the people, the pre-order indeed is for $1,000 donation, and you will get three Chirpial devices. So you will be able to set up a mesh on your living room right away, just, just when you get it. And the thing is that if there are other devices in a range of one kilometer um, distance or one kilometer radio, radius, you will be able to, to make this mesh in a whole city. So if, if you happen to be in a big city where we will get enough pre-orders from, uh, you may be able to create a city-wide mesh network of the Lacha mesh with these devices. So that's our main idea, and that's what we want to deliver. And these devices are, we're theoretically, right now, we are right now testing the, 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 the software on hardware, but it's not production yeah this is only our second prototype but it's theoretically capable of doing 500 kilobits per second in a distance of one two kilometers so this is what we are selling right now in pre-orders and we expect it to be ready for production by the end of q2 this year the 2020 Okay, so that's your realistic uh, roadmap uh, to go like, um, you know, more into the uh, like, like regular sale of, of these devices. But again, um, to understand this, uh, Randy, so people would need to have, in order to communicate, they would need to have the same device, right? So in, in vicinity, like, did I get that right? Well, uh, you mentioned if people will be able to pre-order these devices from IRAM, we hope they do it. So if they want us to succeed, it will be really good for us to get that donation. If they are, they can afford it. But if they cannot, because they cannot afford it, because there are regular people who are making their living, or they are not allowed to receive our device from outside. Like we are for example, block from exporting our devices to Iran for the for the uh, some kind of blockade from the country we are we we will be sending them to from. Um, we expect them, people from Iran, to be able to build their own way their their own Turpial devices. Again, so we because are going it's to give them because it's open source, right? I mean, it's totally we are not only making it open source. But yeah. we are also thinking open hardware. It's like a real open hardware device. So we want it. We we want it to be completely open hardware too. So some versions of the hardware is going to be completely open and accessible for everyone to download it. And if they have a way to manufacture it themselves, they will be able to do it. And if, even if they don't, because there's no way to manufacture them because they don't have the machines to do it, or, or they don't have any country that will manufacture it for them and send it to them because of blockades or something, they will be able to get off the shelf parts that we currently, for example, are using for our prototyping 
and they will be able to build that into their do-it-yourself uh, turbulent device. So they will be, have uh, mostly the same features and, and capabilities of the one that we are going to manufacture ourselves. Oh, wow. Okay. So they will be able to build their own, and mm -hmm. we'll talk the same logic mesh protocol, and it's going to at least have the same uh, features. So it's capable of being one more node inside the logic mesh. Great. Okay. How much uh, technical like um, talent do you need to have in order to self-assemble this according to instructions? Well, at least you need to be geeky that use, I don't know, Raspberry Pi with hats and things like that. Mm -hmm. If you are capable of doing that, it will be pretty easy for you to flash them with the instructions. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not like something that mostly people who have played with desktop computer and um, building their their own desktop computer will be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So, um, Randy, so, okay, let me, uh, now, independently whether someone, you know, self-assembles this because it's, you know, really uh, easy to build and it's open source and, or maybe someone, whatever, you know, maybe, maybe some, there are some people who would even, you know, get their hands on it in, you know, uh, outside of Iran, for example, or any other country, you know, that's difficult to, uh, to send it to, or to, you know, export it to, um, they would get their hands on it and they would, you know, somehow get it into the country, a bunch of these devices, uh, what what's what's the realistic scenario what what can people do with that uh, what are the requirements prerequisites to you know you know to have a seamless uh and censorship resistant bitcoin transaction or any other kind of communication well with the device itself you will just uh, turn it on and it's going to work. It's, 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 it is just a start, it's just plug and play. So it's it's going to start looking for other devices like it in order to be able to create the mesh, whatever it is. And if it finds another device in range, it will enable you to start chatting directly. So if you have the mobile app running on your phone and you are connected to the Terpial device over Wi-Fi. This Terpial device is going to connect over radio with others Terpial devices in the in range, and it's going to enable you, uh, to to let you send messages right away. Great. The thing is that this other devices that are around you are capable of not only relaying messages towards its destination, but it's also going to this other device will also be able to to offer you services. So services like I have a way to the internet, so you can get um, some websites or or get your message delivered over the internet through me, for example. And there are some people that may do this for free. Um, so others might charge you, and they will ask you to send a Bitcoin payment first or something like that, or or to open a Lightning uh, channel, Lightning payment channel with you in order to be able to transmit enough uh, information and only pay for the information that you have transmitted or the data that you have sent. So um, this is what, what we are thinking. It's not, not only messages right away from out of the box, but it's also letting people build things, build things that they could charge other for or, or they could offer them for a community to have like, access to uh, the data downloaded from the blockchain inside for example. Mm -hmm. And also Bitcoin blockchain transaction or Bitcoin blockchain data or, or, or the head or the headers of the blocks. So you can check if you are being censored over your other networks in, in your house or something. Yeah, it's, it's kind of services is, are, are the ones that we want people to build. So we want it to be as open as possible for everyone to build on it. So if you want to run your servers for free or charge others, you are free to do it. Okay. 
Um, you know, um, Richard Myers talked about the, um, I mean, it made sense to me when he talked about the incentivization, uh, in, you know, um, uh, in connection with the Lightning Network. Is that something you you guys are working on? Like, uh, how, how do people, uh, how are people incentivized to, you know, to, what do you call it, to relay the, the communication? The, is that, is that an, is that an issue? Like, would you? with your team, uh, with your project? Well, it, people will need to, to have some kind of incentive to have this device running all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Battery checking that it's actually working and relaying messages, uh, messages. But uh, if, if you have both one or build one and you understand that in order to be able to use it, you needed to have it on, and you needed to have it with battery life working for hours or mm -hmm. days. So it is an incentive to have it working all the time because you want to be also be able to use it. But it's true that it and this is an always on device. It's, it needs to be always on in order to relay message for us. There there will need some there will be some kind of need for incentivization. So in that, what it's what Myers is doing with the open source uh, protocol that he is trying to do for incentivization is is going to let us see how they do it, but also how the 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 WhatsApp um, incentivation incentivated uh, like me messages system of, of, over the Lightning Network is also a good way for us to see how this can be done. Because in the early days of this idea, we thought more about making people run Lightning Network nodes on on the services that they are offering, so they will route payments and get paid. But that might not be enough for you to have it running all the time, right? So in that, um, this is something that needs to be worked on. But it's this is we think it is important to be able to offer services so you can charge others and in that way you will be incentivized yourself to have it running all the time because you want to provide a service and not only because you want to use it and, and go like a free rider and only um, set it up because you want to send a message and then you shut it down so that's that's exactly what why uh, all this research on how to incentivize these mesh networks uh, is also helping helping us um, and because we don't have to build that part to ourselves. Um, but we, we we have this advantage that you will be able to send a lot of data. So you will be able to if, if you need to if you need to use the Lightning Network and the WhatsApp protocol in order to be able to charge or relay messages, this is something that we can integrate you know, into our larger mesh right away without having to adapt it to our hardware or our protocol because we'll be able to use the protocol as it is right now without having to make it customized for our, our product limitations. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So, um, so Again, uh, what I also talked about with Richard Myers is that um, the way I understood is that I think that the main challenge it seems to me is that getting the the like the, the critical um, again you know the, the critical adoption rate like one, once we have uh, like once there are enough uh, you know numbers of people using it uh, there's this you know tipping point then I think a lot of these issues become um, uh, obsolete sort of you know they they take care of him of itself is that correct like uh, like that would be the, the, the well, easiest that's, way that's one of the reasons we point into that it's like we want people to run this like all the time so it's available for others to connect it's like if i have a pill now and i fly to berlin i i will like to get there and be able to send messages right away so that will mean that there are berliners people living there 
already running a, a, a Trupial node like all the time with enough range for me to be able to use it. That's why we are trying to get um, like a feasible product that is capable of doing the things that we say. Because we wanted, for example, the Bitcoin community. It's like we want a Trupial node for each Bitcoin full node. Because a Bitcoin full node is something that is running all the time. That it's always on, that it's always listening to others, and it's always checking that there is an old, a new blog or, or something. So we want each Bitcoin node runner, someone who have it, to also have a triple device connected to it or connected to a chain or always on with a solar panel in their house or even a stationary with a big antenna so it can reach longer distances. So we are thinking that we can bootstrap this Bitcoin community because they also want a way to use their Bitcoin funds without going over the traditional internet connection. They don't want to expose their ID. They don't want to use the SIM card. They, they, indeed, they, they most of the time try using VPNs that are not anonymous or private at all. Um, and, and there are, there are some that are somehow connected to the ID or their home IP address. So we are going to give them a way to send their Bitcoin or check their blockchain data or, or, or do their Lightning Network payments or messages over the WhatsApp over a mesh. In a mesh network, it's completely anonymous, decentralized, so and private. So we, we are trying to get them to get one of these. So we'll be there will be I don't know, it's like 10,000 of them in the world and there will be enough to to start the tipping point so it's like what what else we need it's like we we need also a stationary antennas so we will try to reach to these communities that are already setting up a stationary nodes or stationary antennas for other services and try to e integrate with them so we will be able to have this in every place that we want it's like even the dap node which is a like a full node of the ethereum network for example this is something that um, it also lets you run the bitcoin node inside of it and a lightning network node too uh, i think the integration for bitcoin online network was done in la colmena in, in, in seville so they they will be able and they are willing to add one of the radio models that we are designing for our device, our production ready device. They are, they are willing to add it to the antennas that they already have for Giphy or they have for this DAP node line uh, Ethereum network, um, uh, Ethereum node. So this is the kind of things that um, is going to bring at least enough adoption for a regular user to buy it or build it themselves. And when they get, there is there are enough nodes that will be able to use it. They will be able to use it right away. Okay. And the stationary antennas, uh, again, I mean, we discussed it last time, I remember, is uh, it would be sufficient if, if uh, you know, a critical number of these stationary antennas would be positioned around let's say you know or uh, outside the borders of a specific country like iran or whatever you know um so that would be sufficient how many would be sufficient that my question well we um a year ago or more we thought about putting a couple of them in the border of colombia and venezuela mm -hmm. so in order to be able to reach um, inside the country of Venezuela when everything went down uh, more than a year ago that all states went out of power, of grid power. So this is something that could be done with stationary antenna that could reach um, more than 20 kilometers. There, there are antennas that can do like 70 kilometers long distances. So uh, that way you can connect one city to another. Or, or or point um, directional antennas inside a country. It's like 
if, if you if the other countries if the neighboring countries let you do that you will be able to connect to to reach like the center of a country or the capital city of a country from outside um and even if they don't let, let you you will just look out for the houses that are very close to the border and start putting directional antennas inside the country and that will let you get more distances so you will be able to to work as a relayer for these people that are trapped or, or are right now dis completely disconnected like the russian um Ronet, the russian internet that they have been testing for the past month mm -hmm. gotcha um I'm going to keep this um, talk of ours now pretty short because I, I noticed there's some, a little bit of glitches um, could be on either side. It doesn't matter. Uh, what would be, uh, let me ask you a final uh, question. What would be your um, suggestion or recommendation for people, you know, in Iran or Venezuela to start doing in order to, you know, to, 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 to prepare this infrastructure as efficient as smooth as possible or you know to help um grow grow this infrastructure what, what would you what would be your advice to 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 people you know that we already already talked to for example like zia uh in iran or other 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 countries you know that, that are really in need of these uh of these communication tools or um devices well for the community that we need to start getting the things from the ground. It's basically the Bitcoin community and, and the geek community of people who are currently building things with other radio and models is that they start looking at what we are doing and they start um, supporting us on what they think they can do. Um, look up the github.com slash btcv slash locha, L-O-C-H, a what Locha is <laughs> L O C H A, and we we will more like ask them to review what we are doing. So, so we are a very small team, and we have very limited resources, and we are doing all we can. So, if people would like to be able to use this, um, like the sooner, it will be very helpful if they can hand us and it's like give a hand on reviewing what we're doing and testing what we're doing and even start building their do-yourself um launch image devices which is something that it can be done because we are using those prototype devices with off-the-shelf parts um for our prototype so it's something that can be done so it's people start learning about this and they start helping us and, and, and getting experience on what we are also trying to do, there will be more community of people being capable of setting up this stationary antenna, for example, or, or teaching how to do their own devices too, or, or start introducing people who are more common users to buy these devices or, or pre-order the devices that we are building. Or, or start building their own and start selling to people they know and their neighbors so they can set up their mesh networks, sensory resistant radio messages. So or on, on, on a CD or, or something like that. So in that is one of the things that I think we are going to need help. This kind of um, communities like the Novel or Avado or, or Casa Hobo devices that's there's people with who are making this hardware uh, bitcoin full nodes and lining network nodes is the kind of people that we also need help from in order to be able to integrate our radio model for, model for example into their hardware so we'll be able to to bootstrap our mesh network that is meant to be used by all the bitcoin users but also by everyone who needs to be able to communicate freely as in freedom and and we we are trying to reach out to them and we've been able to talk to some of them in the past conferences that we have attended to. 
Wonderful. Wow. Sounds very exciting. So, um, so yeah, let's hope, um, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's my vision too, that uh, the next time, you know, we have an internet shutdown or a total, you know, internet censorship, uh, you know, wherever in Iran or other countries going on uh, in, let's say, 6, 12, 18 months or whatever, in one or two years, uh, we, we will have uh, an alternative uh, choice, an alternative, um, uh, you know, um, method and and uh, foundation uh, architecture of of communication uh, which is censorship resistant that's the whole point um, and independent of the internet do you think it's realistic yes two years like way enough for that but okay. in that we will need to build it so we we either have to work a lot or we also have to get some help yeah let's let's i'm gonna do a shout out and uh, uh also write all those links um uh and the a short uh, you know maybe po uh, short points uh, written out um how people can help maybe maybe we can discuss that later on offline um so randy thank you so much for your time and uh we're gonna uh, close this um this I, I actually uh, live broadcasted this this show via YouTube, so I hope people can. I'm gonna you know up, re upload it so that people can uh, watch this from the beginning. Um, Randy, do you have any other source information again? Uh, like besides, uh, but I think you you've said it all. Like uh, locha.io, uh, the GitHub uh, link. Is any anything else you wanna add? For now, it's. We are setting up other more public communications uh, channels. So for now, the website, the Twitter, and the GitHub are the best way to reach to us. Okay, wonderful. Okay, all right. So Randy, thank you so much again and um, for your time. And I'll talk to you right away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, so I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did this awesome talk with Rand Brito from Lacha Mesh. Um, really enthusiastic and excited about this project, and I, I, I'm, I totally, you know, believe and trust in in the ethos and the effectivity of this of this project. Uh, this, you know, open source, um, decentralized, open, borderless, um, and you know, um, evolutionary project because uh, it will help a lot of people. Um, and uh, Randy and his team um, would definitely appreciate, you know, um, a funding. And there's a market. There's a market there. I mean, if there's a venture capitalists out there or angel capitalists or any other, you know, visionary entrepreneurs out there who see this market, this potential market, uh, producing, you know, these devices um, and, uh, you know, distributing them, in, especially in countries where there's a need or there is, there will be an urgent need soon, a necessity in countries with it being India, Iran, Venezuela, Africa. And this is why, you know, I, I really uh, would, would appeal to Jack Dorsey of Twitter because he's working on these African projects. He's, he's, you know, he is the one who is really behind the ID of um you know of open source of of bit uh, you know he is the uh, he is the ultimate bitcoin the jack dorsey and yeah i'm, I'm i wish uh, you know uh, we can we could somehow reach out to him and he would uh, you know uh, give it a listen and uh, you know and just get in touch with with randy and his team and sit down and see you know what is possible what is realistic it is realistic what they need is really a little bit more resources time and um and uh, maybe a little bit more manpower or expertise, uh, complementary expertise. So, yeah, so give it a listen, give it a share, retweet it, repost it, uh, follow me on, on Twitter. My handle is uh, Kevan Davani. Uh, write me an email um, uh, to my email address, hello at the totalconnector.com or kd at kvandavani.com. Um, I would also appreciate a positive review and any podcast platform on youtube uh subscribe please follow me that would be a you know a huge uh help for me 
so we can we can get this content to as many as to many as people as possible, uh, at least in the English speaking. Uh, uh, communities and also German speaking communities partially. Um, so yeah, and this was another episode of the Total Bitcoin podcast and to, to, produced by the Total Connector. My name is Kevin Devani. Um, I wish you a happy dive into the year 2020. It will be an exciting year and thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much for support. Bye.